I don't answer to Clive Davis. I don't answer to 50. I don't answer to Jay. I don't answer to none of these motherfuckers. I don't answer to the Illuminati. I answer to God. It's only me and God. And when I jump on these live streams, the first thing that I do is I get on my knees and I say, hey, God, tell me what it is that I need to say in order to be exactly what you want me to be so I can give the people what they need in order to be successful. And whether they take it or not, that's on them. And so my goal is to give you the information. And as I go through it, even when I'm going through it financially, even when I'm going through it and build, building businesses, what I learn as far as my lifestyle and the things that I go through and the reason why I document my life is so that I can basically give you the blueprint of what success is supposed to be so we can remove the excuses and you can stop begging other people for reparations. So you can stop begging everybody for information that's already right there in front of your face. It's right there. It's plain. Made it plain. Also, you're going to know them by their fruits. And so why are you not putting it together and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is all of these motherfuckers following Derek? Because the path to righteousness is narrow. But hell enlarges, it, enlarges itself. I don't even want what everybody else wants. I don't even want what everybody else wants. You know why? Think about this. Think about it. Put it together. Listen, 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 listen here with your heart. Listen with your heart. Don't you know the people that got the biggest platforms and the most subscribers is the brokest? And I'm not even talking about just financially. The, the most famous people are broke. Antonio Brown got more fucking followers. He probably got 300 times the followers, 3,000 times the followers that I got, but he ain't got a two dimes, two nickels to rub together. It's not about how much you get and how many followers you have, it's about how blessed you are and what you can keep. And my blessings don't come from the people, it comes from God. And so I'm always going to be obedient to what I'm supposed to do. And you can't even listen long enough to pay attention in order to get what you need in order to be successful. So you challenge yourself. You need to challenge yourself to pay attention to the people that you listen. I'm not even telling you don't follow them. I'm not even telling you don't rock with them. I think that it's some people that's incredibly entertaining and I love to see them crash out or I love to see their message or I think that they orate really well and it's something that I can learn from them fundamentally. Maybe I don't take their advice, but I look at the way that they communicate and I'm like, damn, that's pretty, pretty incredible, right? I can learn anything from anybody. I can learn anything from the devil know the Bible back and forth. The devil know the Bible better than you do. There's some of the saints. That's why he's so easily able to beguile you. Because he's able to use the information against you that you don't really understand. So I listen to him and I put him on my calendar and I go and check out Derek Jackson. Like, mm, interesting. Look at the devil working. And I look at Umar Johnson and every day y'all hair get nappier because you power to the people. You stink more. Because you want to be natural. Your hairline get more crooked. Your teeth get dirtier. Have y'all ever seen some of these Hebrew Israelites? Come on, listen, man, I don't give a fuck about what y'all talking about. I'm just going to keep it real. Have y'all ever seen some of these Hebrew Israelites? When I drive down the street, right, and I jump in a Porsche, <laughs> let, me, let me stop for a minute. And I jump and I drive down the street. And I put on some of the worst things for me, so I'm always listening to the the, the the most ratchet music sometimes. And I either throw on some Larry June or some Peasy or I might throw in a little bit of Nipsey Hustle. I might even throw on some Dolph. You know what I'm saying? And I'm riding down the street and I look at these motherfuckers and they got on their fringes, right? They fringes be at the bottom of their dashikis or whatever the hell you call it that they ordered straight from China or the white man or some cotton mill that they say that they divested from and they get they they all of their little stuff from Amazon and they iron they do their little iron on shirts and shit like that. And I see they some of their little girlfriends or some of their little chicks that's sitting on the side that's in their little lawn chairs that they bought from Walmart that ultimately continues to enrich the Walton family that they say that they so much against. And I look at them, right? And they chicks is looking real homely and they dusty and they dirty. You know what I'm saying? And if you walk past some of them and they speak too close to you, they breath be stanking. And I'm telling you, listen, this is my real life experience. Don't you try to, don't you try to discount what my experience is. I know what my experience is. I experienced motherfuckers like y'all over in Miami. Yep. We was over in Miami. I experienced y'all in Detroit. I seen y'all on the corners bothering people. 
trying to get people's attention when we was trying to continue to put the city on the map so that we can help people understand how the city is transitioning in Detroit from being some one of the worst cities in the world to one of the biggest come up stories of ever. Y'all was over there making it difficult, burning incense and sage. And y'all was over there putting smoke in the air and y'all had y'all fucking fringes on and y'all chicks was looking dusty as fuck, right? And so I'm looking at these women and the women's breath stink. The kids is dirty and nasty. They ain't got no jobs. I be wondering to myself, if y'all are the chosen people and y'all so awesome, how come we don't know y'all by y'all fruit? Why are y'all so dusty? I have never in my entire life, not one time, and maybe I'm just off. Educate me. Help me to understand. I've never one time in my entire life seen a rich, prosperous, well put together, nicely groomed Hebrew Israelite. Oh, Anton is calling it out. Oh, Anton is saying what's really on my mind. I'm just curious. I have never in my entire life. Yes, they do be living off they woman. They woman be the main bread makers. And these dudes be dusty, dirty, nasty. I know some of them personally. And they be out there with their Bibles, preaching, teaching, being false prophets, and having their fringes on. And bothering good working folk that's going to work every single day trying to take care of business. I be wondering to myself, how are y'all so able to, we to recruit so well? How is it possible that y'all can recruit so effectively? What is enticing about seeing a bunch of broke dudes on the street, can't even claim the very houses that they live in, Woman is absolutely under duress. She pregnant and working at the same time. You don't even got a job. And the main thing that they go home to is they PlayStation 5. And I'll be like, how is this possible? How do y'all even have so much time to study? Y'all ain't got no jobs. And if they got a job, they not really educated. They don't really know how to do anything except for bother people. And they keep blowing smoke in the air. And they got on all of this fake plastic jewelry and they be trying to look all extra Caesar-ish and shit like that. And I be like, man, you see that, you see that costume jewelry he got on? Don't you know that he got that from Amazon and Sheen? He got on the Sheen jewelry, the Sheen jewelry set. And then, and then I seen one guy, and I guess that was a leader. He had on a WWF belt. It looked just like a WWF belt. <laughs> Look, man, I'm trying to tell you, when you drive by these Hebrew Israelites sometimes, pay attention, look at the context clues. I have a bad habit of looking at the context clues. He had on look, what looked like a WWF belt, and it was big and gold, and I seen the Ultimate Warrior wearing that same fucking belt. And I said, who did he steal that from? Who made this man a WWE belt? Who? Hoppo. Who this nigga? Who is him? Who is him? Where him come from, Alpo? But y'all follow him. And y'all want so hard and so fervently. Oh my God, I got to pray for my people. I got to pray fervently for y'all because y'all want to believe so badly in something that you will then align yourself with somebody just based off of shit that they can't even control. You aligning yourself with somebody based off of the color of their skin and a standard that somebody gave to you or whether or not you was 10% black. And that's how y'all decide whether or not y'all going to rock with somebody. It ain't got nothing to do with whether or not they a good person, whether they stand on anything, what their morals and principles and values are. You just going to support it just because it say black owned. 